persuade, my darling Crocus. A home giving you, bad bear a home that wits. Were not affection change thy tender days to the sweet glasses of thy honoured love? I rather would entreat thy company to see the wonders of the world abroad. But since thou lovest, love still and thrive therein, even as I would when I to love begin. Wilt thou be gone, sweet Valentine, and you think on thy approaches when thou happily see some rare noteworthy objects in thy travels, which be partake in thy happiness when thou dost be good help, and in thy danger, if ever danger abide thee. Commend thy grievances to my holy prayers, for I will be thy beadsman, Valentine. And on a love book, I pray for my success. Upon some book I love, I'll pray for thee. That's on some shallow story of the love. What? To be in love where scorn is sport with groans, coy looks with half sore sighs, one fading moment's mirth with twenty for watchful, weary, tedious nights. If happy one, perhaps I have this game. If lost by then a grievous labor won. However, but a folly bought with wit, or else a wit by folly languished. So by your circumstance you call me fool. So by your circumstance I fear you will prove. Tis love you, Camelot. I am not love. Love is your master, for he masters you. And he that is so yoked by a fool, me thinks should not be chronicled for what. But wherefore waste thy time to come see that are the votary to form desire? Once more adieu. My father at the road expects my coming, dare to see me shipped. And thither will I bring thee, Valentine? Ah, sweet Proteus, no. Now let us take our leave. Uh, to me now let me hear from thee by letters uh, of thy success, and not when more news else betide thee and absence of thy friend, and likewise to visit thee with mine. All happiness perchance thee, Milan. As much to you at home, and so farewell. <coughs> he after honor hunts, I after love. He leaves his friends to dignify them more. I leave myself, my friends, and all for love. Thou, Julia, thou hast metamorphosed me, made me lose my time, war with good counsel, set the world at naught, made wit with musing weak, heart sick with thought. Sir Proteus, save you, saw you my master. Uh, but now he parts hence to embark from Milan. Oh, twenty to one that you shipped already. I have played the sheep in losing him. The sheep doth very often strain, if the shepherd be a wild away. You conclude that my master is a shepherd then, and I a sheep. I do. Why then, my horns are his horns, whether I wake or sleep. A silly answer, and well fitting a sheep. This proves me still a sheep. True, and thy master a shepherd. Nay, that I can deny by a circumstance. It shall go hard, but I'll prove it by another. The shepherd seeks the sheep, and not the sheep the shepherd. But I seek my master, and my master seeks not me. Therefore, I am no sheep. The sheep for fodder follows the shepherd. The shepherd for food follows not the sheep. Thou for wages follows thy master, and thy master for wages follows not thee. Therefore, thou art a sheep. Such another proof shall make me cry, bah! But here's thou, gave thou my letter to Julia. I, sir, I, a lost mutton, gave you a letter to her, a laced mutton, and she, a laced mutton, gave me a lost mutton, nothing but my labour. But what said she? Nod. I. I? That's naughty. You mistook, sir. I say she did not, and you ask me if she did not, and I say I. And that said together is naughty. Well, I perceive I must be fain to bear with you. And so how do you bear with me? Marry, sir, the letter, very orderly, having nothing but the word noddy for my pains. Shrew me, but do have a quick wit. And yet it cannot overtake your slow purse. Come, come, open the matter in brief. What says she? Open your purse, that the money and the matter may be both at once delivered. Well, servant, here is for your pains. Now, what says she? Truly, sir, I think you'll hardly win her. Why? <laughs> Because thou perceive so much from her. Sir, could perceive nothing at all from her, no, not so much as a ducat for delivering your letter. And being so hard to me that brought your mind, I feel she'll prove as hard to you in telling your mind. Give her no tokens but stones, for she's as hard as steel. But what says she? Nothing? No, not so much as to take this for thy pains. To testify a bounty, I thank you, you have tested me. And we quit a while off, henceforth carry your letters yourself. And so, sir, I'll commend you to my master. Go get thee gone to save your ship from wreck, which cannot perish, having thee aboard, being destined to a dry death on shore.
I must go send some better messenger, for I fear my Julia will not deign my lines to receive you in them from such a worthless post. Julia, and 
Here is where love wounded Proteus. Poor wounded name. My bosom as a bed shall not see, so the wound be thoroughly healed. But twice or thrice was Proteus written down. Be calm, good wind. Blow not a word away till I have found each letter in the letter. Except my own name. That's some whirlwind bear and throw it then into the raging sea. Lo, here in one line, his name is twice writ. Poor forlorn Proteus. Passionate Proteus. To the sweet Julia. That I'll tell away. Yeah, not so. It said so prettily. And he cobbles it to his complaining names. Thus will I fold them, one and another. Now kiss, embrace, contend, do what you will. <coughs> Madam, dinner is ready and your father stays. Well, let us go. And what? See these papers lie like telltales here. If you respect them, best to take them off. Nay, I was ticking up for laying them down. Yet here they shall not lie for catching cold. I see you have a month's mind to them. I, madam, you may say what sight you see. I see things too. Although you judge, I will. Come, come. Who will please? But you know. Serve a Proteus to spend his time at home, while other men have slender reputation, put forth their sons to seek preferment out. For any of all exercise, he said that Proteus, your son, was meet, and did request of me to importune you to let him spend his time no more at home. I have considered well his loss of time, and how he cannot be a perfect man, and not being tried and tutored in the world. Tell me then, whither were I best to send him? I think your lordship is not ignorant how his companion, youthful Valentine, attends the emperor at his royal court. I know it well! <clears throat> Too good I think you sent, uh, you sent him thither. There shall he practice tilts and tournaments, hear sweet discourse, converse with noblemen, and be an eye of every exercise worthy his youth and nobleness of birth. <laughs> I like thy counsel. Well hast thou advised, and that thou mayest perceive how well I like it. The execution of it shall make known that even with the speediest expedition, I will dispatch him to the Emperor's court. Tomorrow, may it please you, Don Alfonso, with other gentlemen of good esteem, are journeying to salute the Emperor and to commend their service to his will. Good company. Well, then shall Proteus go, and in good time. And now will we break with him. Sweet love, sweet lines, sweet life. Here's her hand, the agent of our heart. Oh, that our fathers would applaud our loves. Oh, heavenly Julia. And now what letter are you reading there? May it please your Lord Julia, it's but a word or two of commendation uh, sent from uh, Valentine, mm. uh, delivered by a friend that came from him. There's no news, my lord, but then he writes how happily he lives and how well beloved and daily graced by the emperor, wishing me with him. Partner of his fortune. <laughs> and how stand you affected to his wish? As one relying on your lordship's will and not depending on his friendly wish. My will is something assorted with his wish. I am resolved that thou shalt spend some time with Valentinus at the Emperor's court. Tomorrow be in readiness to go. Excuse it not, for I am peremptory. My, my lord, I can't be so soon provided. Please, you deliver it a day or two. Look. What thou wantst shall be sent after thee. No more stay. Tomorrow thou must go. Now come, Pantino. You will be employed to hasten on his expedition. Sir. 
Thus have I shunned the fire for fear of burning and drenched me in the sea where I am drowned. I had feared to show my father Julius' letter, lest he should take exceptions to my love. And with the vantage of mine own excuse, I seem most accepted against my love. Sir Proteus, your father calls for you. He is in haste, therefore I pray you to go. Why, this it is. My heart had called there too, and yet a thousand times the answer is no.
take them again. It may take them. Madam, they are for you. Aye, aye, you read them, sir, at my request. I will none of them. They are for you. I would have had them writ more movingly. Please, you, I will write your ladyship another. And when it's writ for my sake, read it over. And if it please you. And if it please me, madam, what then? Why, if it please you, take it for your labour. And so, good morrow, servants. Oh, jest, unseen, inscrutable, invisible. My master sues to her, she hath taught her suitor, he being a pupil to become her tutor. Oh, excellent device, was there ever had a better, that my master being scribed to himself should write the letter. How now, servant? What are you reasoning with yourself? Now I was rhyming, tis you that have the reason. To do what? To be a spokesman for Madame Sylvia. <laughs> to whom? To yourself. Why she wolves you by a figure. Uh, what figure? By a letter, I should say. Uh, why, she hath not read to me. What need she when she hath made you write to yourself? Why do you not perceive the jest? Uh, no, uh, believe me. <laughs> no, believing you indeed, sir. Why, she hath given you a letter. That's the letter I read to her friend. And that letter hath she delivered, and there an end. I would have wonder what. I warrant you, tis as well, for often have you read to her, and she, in modesty, herself hath taught her love himself to write unto her lover. All this I sprick in print, for my print I found it. Oh, why mule she, sir, tis dinner time. I have time. I hearken, sir, though the chameleon love may feed on the air, I am one that am nourished by my victuals, and would fain have meat. Oh, be not like your mistress, be moved, be moved. Have patience, gentle Julia. I must, where is no remedy? When possibly I can, I will return. If you turn not, you will return the sooner. Keep this remembrance for thy Julia's sake. Well then, we'll make exchange. Here, take you this. And seal the bargain with a holy kiss. Here's my hand, for my true constancy. My father stays my coming, answer not. The tide is now, <laughs> nay, not thy tide of tears. A tie will stay me longer than I should. Oh, Julia! Farewell. What? Gone without a word? Why, as a true love should do. It cannot speak. For truth hath better deeds than words to grace it. Sir Proteus. You are stayed for. Go. I come, I come. Alas. This parting strikes poor lovers down.
is my father. This left shoe is my father. This left shoe is my mother. No, that cannot be so neither. Ah, yes, yes, it is so. It has the word soul. <laughs> so, this shoe is my mother. This is my father. I am the dog. No. Uh, the dog is himself and I am the dog. Oh, no. Uh, the dog is me and I am myself. <sighs> now, come I to my father. Father, your blessing. <laughs> now, should the shoe not speak for weeping? <laughs> Now come I to my mother. Oh, that she could speak now like a wood woman. Ah, well, I'll kiss her. Well, that's my mother's breath up and down. And now come I to my dog. Sheds not a tear nor speak, oh, speaks a word as I lay the dust with my tail. Lance, away, away, abort. Thy master is shipped the dog supposed to have to lost. What's the matter? Why weepest thou, man? Away, ass. You lose the tide if you tarry any longer. It's no matter of the time, my lost. It's the unkindest tide that ever any man tied. What's the unkindest tide? Why? He just tied here. Crap my dog. Tut, man, I meant thou lose the flood. And in losing the flood, lose thy voyage. And in losing thy voyage, lose thy master. And in losing thy master, lose thy service, and in losing thy service. I lose the tide, and the voice, and the master, and the service, and the tide. <laughs> Why, man, if the rivers were dry, I could fill it with my tears. If the wind were down, I could drive the boat with my sigh. Ah, come away, man. I was sent to call thee. Sir, call me what thou darest. <clears throat> Will thou go? I'll go. Antonio, your countryman. 
hath he not a son? I, my lord, a son that well deserves the honor and regard of such a father. You know him well. I know him as myself. For from my infancy we have conversed and spent our hours together. Indeed, Proteus, for that's his name, is complete in feature and in mind with all good grace to greater gentlemen. Well, sir, this gentleman has come to me with commendation from great potentates, and here he means to spend his time a while. I think tis no unwelcome news to you. Should I have wished the thing, it had been he. Welcome him, then, according to his worth. Sylvia, I speak to you, and you, sir, the real. For Valentine, I need not cite him to it. I shall send him to you hither presently. This is the gentleman that I told your ladyship had come along with me, but that his mistress did hold his eyes locked in her crystal looks. Now she hath franchised them, some other part of the fealty. Nay, sure. I think she holds them prisoner still. Nay, then he should be blind, and being blind, hope to see his way to seek out you. Why, lady, love hath twenty five eyes. Ha! <laughs> they say that love had not an eye at all. To see such lovers, for you, as yourself, upon the homely object love can wink. Welcome, dear Proteus. Mistress, I beseech you, confirm his welcome with some special favor. His wealth is warrant his welcome hither. It is he what wish to hear from. Mistress, it is. Sweet lady, entertain him to be my fellow servant to your ladyship. But you know, mistress, was so high a servant. Not so, sweet lady. Too mean a servant to have a look on such a worthy mistress. My duty will I boast of, nothing else. And duty never yet did what he's mean. I welcome you to a worthless mistress. I'll die in the necessity of it yourself! That you're welcome? That you're worthless. Madam? My lord, your father, wishes to speak with you. I wait upon his pleasure. Come, Cytherio, go with me. Once more, your servant welcome. I'll leave to comfort from the fence. When you have done, we look to hear from you. Uh, we'll both attend upon your ladyship. <laughs> now tell me, how do all from whence you came? How does your lady, and how proud your love? My tales of love, of love were once weary you. I know you join us in a love discourse. I approaches, but that life's altered now. I have done penance for contending love, whose high imperious thoughts have punished me. For in revenge of my contempt of love, Love hath chased thee from my enthralled eyes, and make them watchers of my own heart's sorrow. Now no discourse, except it be of love. Now can I break my fast, dine, sup, and sleep upon the very naked name of love. Enough. I read the fortune in your eye. But was this the idol that you worship, sir? Even she. And is she not a heavenly saint? Uh, no, but she is an earthly paragon. <laughs> Call her divine. When I was sick, you gave me bitter pills, and now I must minister the like to you. Then speak the true fire, if not divine. Yet let her be a principality, sovereign to all the creatures on the earth. Except my mistress. Yes, sweet, except not any. Except thou will accept against my love. Why, Valentine, what braggadism is this? Pardon me, Proteus. All I can is nothing to her whose worth make other worth is nothing. She is alone. Then let her alone? <laughs> not for the world. And why, man, she is mine own, and I as rich in having such a jewel as twenty sea of the sound of pearl, the water nectar, and the rocks of pure gold. Forgive me that I do not dream on thee, because thou seest me dote upon my love. My foolish rival that her father likes only for his possession are so huge, is gone along with her, and I must after for love, uh, thou knowest, is full of jealousy. But she loves you. Aye, and we are betrothed. Nay more, our marriage hour, with all the cunning manner of our flight, determine of how I must climb her window, the ladder made of corpse, and all the means plotted and agreed on for my happiness. Good Proteus, go with me to my chambers in these affairs to aid me with thy counsel. Go on before, I shall inquire you forth. I must run to the road to disembark some necessaries I needs must use, and then presently I'll attend you. Will you make haste? I will. Even as one heat, another heat expels, or as one nail by strength drives out another. 
So the remembrance of my former love is by a new object quite forgotten. Is it mine, or Valentine's praise, her true perfection, or my false transgression that makes me reasonless to reason thus? She is fair. So is Julia that I love, uh, that I did love. For now my love is thawed. Methinks my seal to Valentine is cold, and that I love him not as I was wont. Oh, but I love his lady too, too much, and that's the reason I love him so little. Tis but a picture I have yet beheld, and that hath dazzled my reason's light. When I look on her perfections, there is no reason but I should be blind. If I can check my erring love, I will. If not, to compass her will I use my skill.
thou bidst me forswear. At first, I did adore a twinkling star. Now I worship a celestial sun. Julia, I lose. Valentine, I lose. If I keep them, I needs must lose myself. If I lose them, thus find I by their loss. For Valentine, myself, and for Julia, Sylvia. I will forget that Julia is alive, remembering that my love to her is dead. And Valentine, I'll hold an enemy, aiming at Sylvia as a sweeter friend. I cannot now prove constant to myself without some treachery used to Valentine. This night, he meaneth with a corded ladder to climb Celestia Sylvia's chamber window, myself in counsel his competitor. Now, presently, I'll give my father notice of their disguising and pretended flight, who, on a rage, will banish Valentine. For Thurio, he intends, shall wed his daughter. But Valentine being gone, I'll quickly cross by some slight trick blunt Thurio's dull proceeding. Love, lend me wings to make my purpose swift. As I was let me wit to pluck this drift. Men, base men, that 
reduced him to some basic fact, but true as stars did govern Proteus' birth. His love sincere, his faults immaculate, his heart as far from fraud as heaven from earth. Pray, heaven, he proves so when you come to him. Now, as thou lovest me, do him not that wrong to bear such a hard opinion of his truth. Only to serve my love by loving him. And presently go with me to my chamber to furnish me upon my longing journey. All that is mine, I leave at thy dispose. My goods, my lands, my reputation. Only in lieu thereof, dispatch me hence. Come, answer not, but to presently. I'm impatient of my terriers. Undeserving as I am, my duty pricks me on to answer that which does no worldly good should draw from me. No, worthy prince. Sir Valentine, my friend, this knight intends to steal away your daughter. And should she thus, and I know you have determined to bestow her through you, and should she thus be stolen away from you, it would be much vexation to your age. This love of theirs myself have often seen. Happy when they have judged me fast asleep. And oftentimes have proposed to forbid Sir Valentine her company and my court. But fearing lest my jealousy might err and so unworthily disgrace the man, I gave him gentle looks, only to find that which thyself has now disclosed to me. No, noble lord, they have devised a mean how he a chamber window will ascend, and with the court of ladder fetch her down, before which the youthful lover now is gone, where, if it please you, you may intercept him. But, good my lord, do it so cunningly that my discovery be not aimed at. Upon mine honour, he shall never know I had any light from thee of this. Adieu, my lord, Sir Valentine is coming. <clears throat> Sir Valentine, whither away so fast? Please it, your grace. There is the messenger that stays to bear my letters to my friends. The tenor of them doth but signify my health and happy being at your court. Nay, nay, no matter. Stay with me a while. I am to break with thee of some affairs that touch me near, wherein thou must be secret. It is not unknown to thee that I have sought to match my daughter with my friend Sir Thurio. I know it well, my lord, and sure the match were rich and honourable. Uh, cannot your grace win her to fancy him? No, trust me, she is proud, stubborn, disobedient. Neither regarding that she is my daughter, nor fearing me as if I were her father. And may I say to thee, this pride of hers, upon advice, hath drawn my love from her. I am now full resolved to take a wife. What will your grace have me to do in this? There is a lady in Milan here who is nice and coy in my effect, but she not esteemed my aged eloquence. Therefore, I would have thee my tutor, for long ago I have forgot to court. Win her with gifts, if she respects not words. Dumb jewels, often in their silent kind, more than quick words do move a woman's mind. But she did scorn a present that I sent her. A woman sometimes scorns what best contents her. Send her another, never give her over. For scorn at first makes it after love the more. If she frowns, it's not of hate in you, but rather to beget more love in you. Take no repulse at whatever she doth say, for get you gone. She doth not mean away. But the doors be locked and the keys kept safe, that no man had recourse to her by night. What lets but one may enter at her window? <laughs> but her wood chamber is aloft and far from the ground, and built so shelvingly that one cannot climb it without apparent hazard of his life. Why then, a ladder, a quaintly made with court, would serve to scale another hero's tower. A so bold that would have entered it. When will you use it? Pray, sir, tell me that. This very night. 
love is like a child who longs for everything he can come by. But Heidi, I will go to her alone. Tell me, how shall I best convey the letter to them? It will be like an order you will bear it on a cloak that is of any length. Cloak as long as thine will serve the turn? Aye, my lord. Then let me feel like cloak. I shall get me one of such another length. Any cloak will serve the turn, my lord. How shall I fashion me to wear a cloak? I pray thee, let me feel thy cloak upon me. What letter is the same? To Sylvia. And here. An engine fit for my proceeding. I should be so bold as to break the seal for once. My thoughts do have her with my Sylvia Knightley, and slaves that are that sent them flying. Or could their master come and go as lightly, himself would lodge with senseless they are lying? What is here? Sylvia, this night I will enfranchise thee. Tis so, and here's the letter for the purpose. Go. Base intruder. Over a weaning slave! Bestow thy fawning smiles upon equal mates. <clears throat> but if thou lingerest in my territories longer than the swiftest expedition, will give thee time to leave our royal court by ten. My wrath shall far exceed the love I ever bore my daughter or thyself. Be gone. But as thou lovest thy life, Make speed from hence. And why not death? Rather than living torment. To die is to be banished from myself. And Sylvia is myself. Banished from her is self from self. A deadly banishment. What light is light, if Sylvia be not seen? What joy is joy, if Sylvia be not by? Unless I look on Sylvia in the day, there is no day for me to look upon. She is my essence, and I leave to be. If I be not by her fair influence, tarry I here. I but attend on death. Run, boy, run and sing about! What ho! What ho! What see stop! Here we go to fight! Valentine? No. Who then? His spirit? Neither. What then? Nothing. Can nothing be? Master, shall I strike? Who wouldst thou strike? Nothing. Billy Forbear. <laughs> Friend Valentine, a word? My ears are stopped and cannot hear good news. So much of bad have already possessed them. Then in dumb silence will I bury mine. But they are harsh, untunable, and bad. Uh, sir, there is a proclamation that thou art banished. Thou art banished? Oh, that's the news. From hence, from Sylvia, and from me, thy friend. Oh, I have fed upon this goal already. And now excess of it will make me submit. Doth Sylvia know that I am banished? Aye. Aye, and she doth to the doom, a sea of melting pearl, which some call tears. Those at her father's churlish feet she tended, and neither bended knees, pure hands held up, sad sighs, deep groans, or silver shedding tears could penetrate her uncompassioned sire. But Valentine, if he be taken, must die. No more. Unless the next word thou speakest have some malignant power upon my life. If so, I pray thee, breathe it into my ears, an ending answer to my endless dollar. Cease to lament for that which thou canst not help, but study help for that which thou lamentst. Time is the nurse and breeder of all good. If thou sayest thou canst not see thy love, besides, thy staying here will abridge thy life. Come. I'll convey thee through the city gate, and ere part of thee confirm and enlarge all that may concern your love affairs. 
as thou lovest Sylvia, though not for thyself, come along with me. I pray thee, Lawrence, and if thou seest speed, bid her make haste and meet me at the north gate. Uh, go, Sarah, go fight out. Come, Valentine. Oh, my dear Sylvia, have this Valentine. I'm but a fool, look you. Yet I have the wit to think my master is kind of a knave, but that's all one if he be but one knave. He lives not now that knows me to be in love. Yet I am in love. But the team of horses are not plucked that from me. Nor to him, nor who tis I love. Yet tis a woman. But what woman? I'll not even tell myself. Tis a milkmaid. Tis not a maid, for she had had gossip. Tis a maid, for she's a master's maid and works for wages. She has more qualities than a water spaniel, which is much in a bare Christian. Here is the catalogue of her condition. Imprimis, she can fetch and carry. Why, a horse can do no more. No, a horse cannot fetch, but only carry. Therefore, she's better than a jade. <laughs> Item. She can milk. Marry. Look you, a sweet virtue in a maid with clean hands. How now, Signor Lance? What news with your mastership? With my mastership? Why, it's at sea. Well, you old by still mistake the word. What news then in your paper? Let me read. Um, Fire on thee, Jolted, thou canst not read. Thou no liest, I can. Then tell me this, who begot thee? Mary, the son of my grandfather. <laughs> Illiterate loiterer, was the son of thy grandmother. That proves that thou canst not read. Come, fool, come, try me in thy paper. Imprimis, she can milk. Aye, so she can. <coughs> Item, she brews good ale. And therefore comes the blessing. Blessing on your heart, for you brew good ale. I assume she can wash and scour. A special virtue, then she need not be washed and scoured. I assume she can spin. Then may I set the world on wheels so she can spin for her living. I assume she has many nameless virtues. As much as to say bastard virtues, for that indeed know not their fathers and therefore have no names. Here follow her vices. Uh, close at the heels of her virtues. She is not to be kissed fasting in respect of her breath. A fault that may be mended with a breakfast. What's next? Item, she hath a sweet mouth. That makes amends for her sour breath. <laughs> Item, she is slow in words. Oh, Philip has said that among her vices. To be slow in words is a woman's only virtue. Pray the outward and said it among her chief vices. Virtues. <clears throat> Item, she had no teeth. Eh, I care for that neither. Uh, because I love the crusts. <clears throat> Item, she will often praise her liquor. If her liquor be good, she shall. If not, I will, for good things should be praised. Item, she's too liberal. Oh, to her tongue she cannot, for what's red she's slow off. Of her tongue, of her purse she shall not, for that I'll keep shut. And of another thing, I cannot help. Proceed. Item, she hath more hair than wit, and more faults than hairs, and more wealth than faults. Stop there. I'll have her. She was mine and not mine, twice or thrice in the last article. Rehearse that once more. <clears throat> Item, she hath more hair than wit. No more hair than wit. Uh, that may be what's next. And more faults than hairs. Uh, that's monstrous. Oh, that, that was. And more wealth than faults. That word makes the false gracious. I'll have her. Being a match, I says nothing is impossible. I'll what that? Why, then I'll tell thee. Thy master stays for thee at the north gate. For me? For thee! And who art thou? Thee has stayed longer for better men than thee. And must I go to him? Thou must run to him. Going will scarce serve the turn. Why didst not tell me sooner? Pox of your love letters! Now she'll be swinged for reading my letters. I'll manage, slave, thrusting herself into my secret. 
I laughed and rejoiced in the girl's correction. Fear not, Sir Thoreau, but that she will love you now that Valentine is banished from her sight. Since his exile, she had despised me most. Was sworn my company and railed at me that I am desperate of obtaining her. This weak, impressive love is as a figure trenched in ice that within hours he doth dissolve to water and doth lose his form. A little time will melt her frozen thoughts and worthless Valentine shall be forgotten. How now, Sir Proteus? Is your countryman, according to our proclamation, gone? Gone, my good lord. My daughter takes his going grievously. A little time, my lord, will kill thy grief. So I believe, but Thurio thinks it not so. Thou knowest how willingly I would affect the match between my daughter and Sir Thurio. Also, thou art not ignorant how she opposes her against my will. Uh, she did, my lord, when Valentine was here. I am perversely to persevere so. Tell me, what might we do to make the girl forget the love of Valentine and love Sir Thurio? The best way is to slam Valentine with a force, uh, cowardice and poor descent. Uh, three things of women highly hold in hate, but she will think that it is spoken hate. I have his enemy delivered. Uh, therefore, it, it must for circumstance be spoken by someone whom she esteemed as his friend. Then you must undertake to slander him. Uh, and then, my lord, I shall be loath to do. Uh, Tis an ill office of a gentleman, especially against his very friend. Where your good word cannot advantage him, your slander cannot damage him. Therefore, the office is indifferent, being entreated to it by your friend. You prevail, my lord. If I can do it, by often making speaking as his praise, she shall not long continue to love him. To say this, we her love of Valentine, it follows not that she loves Sir Thurio. Therefore, as you unwind her love from him, lest it should ravel and be good to none, thou must provide to bottom it on me, which must be done by praising me as much as you and worth dispraise Sir Valentine. And, Proteus, we dare trust you in this kind, for we know on Valentine's report that you are already love's firm votary and cannot soon revolt and change your mind. Upon this warrant, you shall have access with Sylvia, where you may temper her by your persuasions to hate young Valentine and love my friend. As much as I can do, I will effect. But you, Sir Thurio, are not sharp enough and must lay lime to tangle her desires by Wailful sonnets whose composed rhyme should be full fraught with serviceable vows. Aye, much is the force of heaven bred poetry. Say that upon the altar of her beauty you sacrifice your tears, your sighs, and your heart, and write till your ink be dry and with your tears moistened again, and frame some feeling line that may discover such integrity. After your dye lamenting elegies, visit by night your lady's chamber window with some sweet concert. This and nothing else will inherit her. <laughs> this discipline shows that thou hast been in love. And I good advice on putting good practice tonight. Therefore, sweet Proteus, my direction giver, let us enter the city presently to sort some gentlemen well skilled in music. I have a son that will serve the turn to give the answer to thy good advice. About it, gentlemen. We'll wait upon your grace till after supper, and we will determine our proceedings. Even now, about it, I will pardon thee. Which now torments me to rehearse. 
I killed a man, in whose death I must repent, but yet I stood manfully in fight, without false vantages or base treachery. Why, well, I never repented it was done so. But tell us, were you banished for such small a fault? I was, and held me glad to such a doom. But by the bare scum of Robin Hood's fat friar, this fellow were a king for our wild faction. Yes, we'll have him. What? Master, be one of them. It's an honorable kind of thievery. Peace, villain. Tell us this. Have you anything to say to him? Enough thing but my fortune. Know then that some of us are gentlefolk, such as the fury of ungoverned youth, thrust from the company of awful men. Myself was from Verona banished for practicing to steal away a lady, an heir, and yet allied unto the Duke. And I, from Mantua, for a gentleman whom, in my mood, I stabbed under the heart. And I, for such like petty grounds as these, but to the purpose! You are a banished man, therefore, of all the rest, we parlay to you. Will thou be content to be our general, to make a virtue of necessity and live, as we do, in the wilderness? What says thou? Will thou be of our consort? Say I be the captain of us all. We'll do the homage, be ruled by thee, love thee as our commander and our king. But if thou scornst our courtesy, thou diest. Thou shalt not live to break what we have offered. I take your offer and will live with you, provided that you do no outrages on silly women or poor passengers. No, no, we detest such vile base practices. Come, go with us. We'll bring thee to a cruise and show you the treasure we have got, which with ourselves all risk at thy disposal. Already have I been false to Valentine, and now I must be as unjust to Thurio. Under the colour of commending him, I have access my own love to prefer. But Sylvia is too fair, too true, too holy to be corrupted by my worthless gifts. And I protest true loyalty to her. She twits me with the falsehood to my friend. When to her beauty I commend my vows. She bids me think of how I've been forsworn in breaking faith with Julia, whom I love. And notwithstanding her, sudden quips the least were of quell that I was hoping. And yet, Spaniel, like the more she spurns my love, the more it grows and fawns than her still. But he comes through here. Now must we to her window and give some evening music to her ear. How now, Sir Proteus? Are you prepped before us? I so very ill. Why do you know? Not the creeps in service where I cannot go. I, but I hope you will not not here. Is that what I do? Or else I would be hence. Who? Sylvia? I, I, Sylvia, for your sake. I thank you for your. Now, gentlemen, let's chew to it last your while. Now, my young guest, you think she had a cold. I pray, wait, sister. Mary, my hostess. Why cannot be. Mary, come, um, we'll have you marry. I'll bring you where she'll be using it to the gentleman that you asked for. But shall you speak? I that you shall. That will be music. Hark, hark. Is he a monkey? Hey, but peace. Let's hear him. Who is Sylvia? What is she? Let all our swains commend her. She excels each mortal thing on the dollar. 
you where Gondi's men told me. We locked her out of all nick. Who wears the songs? I'm going to see his dog with tomorrow by his master's command. We must carry for a present to this lady. The peace is set aside. The company pass. <laughs> Sir Thurio, behind you, I will so plead that you shall say my cunning drift excels. Where meet we? At St. Gregory as well. Farewell! Madam, good evening to your ladyship. Oh, I thank you for your music, gentlemen. Who is that to say? One whom, if you knew his pure heart's truth, you would quickly learn to know him by his voice. Sir Proteus, as I take it. Sir Proteus, madam! And your servant. What's your will? They may come as yours. Have your wish. My will is even this, that presently you hie you home to bed. Thou huddle, perjure, false, a disloyal man. Thinkst thou I am so shallow, so conceitless, to be seduced by thy flattery that has deceived so many with thy vows? Return, return, and make thy love amends. For me, by this pale queen of night, I swear, I am so far from granting thy request that I despise thee for thy wrongful suit, and by my intent to chide myself, even for this time I spend in talking to thee. Sweet madam, I grant that I do love a lady, but she's dead. <laughs> to force if I should speak it, for I am sure she is not buried. Say that she be, yet Valentine, thy friend, survives. To whom thy self art witness that I am betrothed? Art thou not ashamed to wrong him with thy opportunity? I likewise hear that Valentine is dead. <laughs> and so suppose am I, for in his grave assure thyself my love is buried. A sweet lady, let me rake from the earth. Go to thy lady's grave and call her thence, or at the least in her sepulchre thine. Madam, if your heart be so obdurate, vouchsafe me yet your picture for my love. To the hell speak, to the hell sigh and weep. For since uh, your perfect self is else devoted, I am but a shadow, and to your shadow will I make true love. For her substance, you would be your deceiver and make it a shadow, as I am. I am very loath to be your idol, sir, but since your falsehood shall come you well to worship shadows and adore false shapes. Send to me in the morning, and I'll send it. So good rest. As wretches have all night, the wait for execution in the morn. Hostess, will you go? Pray, well, I suppose it's Mary at my house. Trust me, I think it's almost day. Not so, but it hath been the longest night that ever I watched. And the most heaviest. This is the hour that Madam Sylvia entreated me to call and know her mind. There's some great madam which should employ me. Madam! Madam! Who calls? Your servant and your friend, one who attends your ladyship's command. Sir Eklund, a thousand times good morrow. And as many worthy lady to yourself. According to your ladyship's repose, I am thus early come to know what service is your pleasure to command me in. Oh, Eklund, thou art a gentleman. I think that I flatter, for I swear I do not. Valiant, wise, remorseful, well accomplished. Thou art not ignorant what dear good will have answered banished Valentine, nor how my father would enforce me marry vain theory of whom my very soul appalls. Sir, the more I would to Valentine to match you out where he makes a bow. And for the way so dangerous to pass, I do decide thee, even from a heart as full of sorrows as the sea of sands, to bear me company and go with me. If not, to hide what I have said to thee, that I may venture to depart alone. Madam, I pity much your grievances, and since I know they virtue to your place, I give consent to go along with you, wrecking as little of a tide of me, as much I wish all good to fortune you. When shall we go? This evening coming. Where shall I meet you? At Friar Patrick's cell, where I intend holy confession. I will not fail your ladyship. Good morrow, gentle lady. Good morrow, kind sir.
manservant shall play the cur with him. Look you, it goes hard. One I brought off from a puppy was sent to deliver as a present to Mr. Sylvia from my master. And I came no sooner into the dining chamber, and he steps me on her trencher and steals her common leg. Oh, it's a foul thing when a man's cur cannot keep himself in all companies. If I had not had more wit than he to take the fault upon me than he did, he had been hanged for it. As sure as I did, he had suffered for it. You shall judge. He had not been there, bless the mark, a pissing while, but all the chamber smelt him. <sighs> what cur is that? says one. Whip him up, says another. Hurg him up, says the duke. I hadn't been acquainted with the smell before, knew it was crap. <laughs> you do him all wrong, quoth I. It was uh, me who did the thing you want of. He do me no more ado but whips me out. How many masters would do this for his servant? Thou thinkest not of this now. <sighs> did I not bid thee still mark me and do as I do? When did thou ever see me heave up my leg and make forth again a, a gentlewoman's farthingale? Did thou ever see me do such a trick? Sebastian is thy name. I like thee well and will employ thee in some service presently. In what peace I'll do what I can. My lord, thou wilt. How now, you horse and peasant? Where have you been these two days, Larry? Uh, Mary, sir, I carried Mr. Sylvia the dog you bade me. And what says she to my little jewel? <laughs> Mary, <laughs> she says uh, your dog is a cur and tells you currish fangs is good enough for such a present. But she received my dog. Uh, no, sir, indeed she did not. Here, I have brought him back. What did thou offer this for me? <laughs> I, sir, <laughs> the other squirrel was stolen from me from the, uh, by the hangman's boys in the market place, so I offered her my own, which is a dog ten times as big as yours, and uh, therefore the gift the uh, greater. Go get me gone, buy my dog again, I'll never again return into my sight. What? What? Stay as to vex me, they're gone. <laughs> Idiot. Slave is still an end to be ashamed. Sebastian, I have entertained you. For tis no trusting of your food, lad. Therefore knowing this, for this I entertain you. Uh, go prisoner, deliver this ring to Madame Sylvia. She loved me well to deliver it to me. It seems she loved not her to leave her token. She's dead, he lied. No, I think she lives. Alas! Why dost thou cry alas? I cannot choose for pity her. Wherefore should thou pity her? Because he thinks she loved you as well as she do love your lady Sylvia. She dreams of him that has forgot her love for you. Don't on her that cares not for her love. It is pity love should be so contrary, and thinking of it makes me cry. Alas. Well, give her that ring, and there with all this letter. That's a chamber. Tell my lady I claim a promise for a heavenly picture. Your message done, hide home unto my chamber, where you shall find me. Sad and solitary. How many women would do such a message? Alas, poor Proteus. Thou hast entertained a fox to be the shepherd of thy lambs. This ring I gave him when he parted from me to find him, to remember my good will. And now am I unhappy messenger to plead for that which I would not obtain. I am my master's true confirmed love, but cannot be true servant to my master unless I prove false traitor to myself. Yet will I woo for him, yet so coldly as yes, heaven it knows. I would not have him speak. Gentlewoman, good day. Pray you be my means to bring me where to speak with Madame Sylvia. What would you have that I be she? If you be she, I do entreat your patience to hear the message that I am sent from. From whom? From my master, Sir Proteus, madam. Oh, he sent you for Peter. Aye, madam. Go give your master this. And tell him from me, one Julia that his changing books forget would better fit his chamber than this shadow. Madam, who is this paper? But pardon me, madam, I have on advice delivered you a letter that I should not. This is the letter to your ladyship. I pray thee, let me look at that again. Nay, 
it may not be a good man of love. Their hopes. I will not look upon your master's lines. I know they're stuffed with crustaceans and full of newfound oats, which he will break as easily as I do tear his paper. Madam, he sends your ladyship this ring. The more shame for him that he sends it me. For I have heard him say a thousand times, his junior gave him his departure. Though his false finger has profaned the ring, mine shall not do his junior so much wrong. She begs you. Uh, what says that? I beg you, madam. Th that you tender her. Oh, gentlewoman. My master wrong so much. Dost thou love her? Almost as well as I do know myself. To think upon her woe, so I do protest that I have wept a hundred several times. I feel like she thinks that purchase hath forsook her. I think she doth, and that's the cause of sorrow. Is she not passing fair? If she had been fairer, madam, than she is. When she did think my master loved her, well, she, in my judgment, was as fair as you, but since the air has starved the roses in her cheeks and pinched the lily tips off her face. How tall is she? About my stature, her fall at Pentecost when all our pageant of delight were played. Our youth got me to play the woman's part, and I was trimmed in Madame Julia's gown, which so be as fed by all men's judgment as if the garment had been made for me. Therefore, I know she's about my height. She is holy to be gentle youth. Alas, a poor lady, desolate and left. I weep myself to think upon thy words. Here, youth, there's my purse. I give thee this for thy sweet mistress's sake. Because thou lovest her. Farewell. And she shall thank you for her, wherever you know her. A virtuous gentlewoman, mild and beautiful. I hope my master suit proves to be but cold, since she respects my mistress's love so much. Alas, how love can trifle with itself. Here is her picture. Let me see. I think if I had such a tire, this face of mine would be as false as of hers. Her eyes are grey as glass, and so are mine. Aye, but her forehead's low, and mine's as high. What should it be that he respects in her, that I can make respect of in myself, with this fond love, and not a bind of God? I'll use thee kindly for the mistress's sake to use me so. Or else, by Jove, I vow, I should have scratched out your unseeing eyes to make my master out of love with thee. Four's not 
feelings up. We recover that we are sure enough. Happy you were, madam. Ere I came, but by my coming, I have made you happy. 
Why, thy approach thou makest me most unhappy. And me when he approaches your presence. Had I been seized by a hungry lion, I would have been breakfast to the beast, rather than have false Proteus rescue me. Oh, heaven be judge how I love Valentine, whose life is tender to me as my soul. Therefore, be gone. Solicit me no more. What dangerous action stood next to death I would not undergo? One calm look. Hope oh, tis to curse in love and still approve. Women cannot love what they are beloved. Where Proteus cannot love what he's beloved. Read over Julia's heart, thy first best love. For whose dear sake thou didst then rend thy faith into a thousand oaths. And all those oaths descended into perjury to love me. Thou hast no faith left now, unless thou hast two. And that's far worse than none. Better have none than plural faith, which is too much by one. Thou counterfeit to thy true friend! In love, who respects friends? All men but Proteus. Nay, the gentle spirit of moving words can no way change you to a milder form. I'll woo you like a sword in arms and love you against the nature, and I'll force you! <laughs> I'll force you to use my son! Ruffian, let go of that brute, uncivil touchdown friend of an ill fashion. Valentine, thou common friend, that's what thou favor love. Such is a friend now, a treacherous man. Thou hast begun my hopes, not but mine eye could have persuaded me. Now I cannot say I have one friend alive, thou wouldst disprove me. Who should be trusted when one's own right hand is put to the bosom? Proteus, I am sorry I must never trust thee more. Count the world a stranger for thy sake. The private wound is deepest. O oh, time most accursed among all foes that a friend should be the worst. My shame and guilt follows me. Forgive me, Valentine. If heart desire be a sufficient rise of forfeit, I tell it here, for I do as freely suffer as ever I did commit. Then I am paid, and once again I do receive the honest. Who by repentance is not satisfied, is not heaven nor earth, for these are pleased. By penitence, the eternal wraths of peace. Oh, me unhappy! Look to the boy! Why, boy? Why, why? Come on, what's the matter? Look up, speak. Oh, good sir, my master charged me to deliver a ring which after my neglect was never done. Where's that ring, boy? Why, this is the ring I gave to Julia. Um, oh, crying mercy, so I mistook. This is the ring he sent to Sylvia. But how came thou by this ring? And by the part I gave this unto Julia. And Julia herself did give it me. And Julia herself had brought it hither. How? Julia! <laughs> Behold her that gave aim to all thy oaths. And it's a tale of deeply in her heart. Oh, oh, as thou with perjury clad the roof. Oh, Proteus, let this happen, make thee blush. Be thou ashamed that I have took upon me such an immodest raiment, if shame live in a disguise of love. It is the lesser thought. Modesty binds women to change the shapes that men. They're minds! The men their minds is true. Oh heaven, where man would constant he were perfect. But then one fault makes him run through all the sins. In constancy falls off and it begins. <coughs> what is in Sylvia's face? But I may spy more fresh in Julia's with a constant eye. Uh, come, come, a uh, hand from either. Let me be blessed to make this happy close. To I pity two such friends should be long foes. Heaven, bear witness. I have my wish forever. And I, mine. A bride! 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 A
my lord the duke. Your grace is welcome to a man of disgrace. Banished to Valentine. Sir Valentine? Yonder is Sylvia, Sylvia is. Mine? Furio, give back, or else embrace thy death. Come not within the measure of my wrath. Do not name Sylvia thine. If once again, Verona shall not hold thee. Here she stands. And take my possession of her with a touch. I dare thee but to breathe upon my love. him not. I care not for her, and therefore she is thine. The more degenerate base art thou, to make such means for her as thou hast done, and leave her on such slight conditions. <laughs> now, upon the honour of my ancestry, I do applaud thy spirit, Valentine, and find thee worthy of an emperor's love. Know that I here forget all form of grief, cancel all grudge, repeal thee home again. Valentine, thou art a gentleman, and well derived. Take thou thyself. Thou hast deserved her. I thank your grace. The gift hath made me happy. I now beseech you, for your daughter's sake, to grant me one boon that I shall ask of you. Granted for thine own, whatever it be. These uh, banished men that I have kept with all are men endured with worthy qualities. Forgive them what they have committed, and let them be recalled from their exile. They are reformed, civil, uh, full of good, and uh, fit for great employment, worthy lord. Thou hast prevailed. I pardon them and thee. Come, let us go. We will include all jars with mirth, triumph, and rare solemnity. And as we walk along, I dare be bold with all discourse to make your grace to smile. What think you of this page, my lord? I think the boy had grace in him. He blushes. I warned you, my lord. More grace than boy. Uh, what mean you by that, sir? I will tell as we pass along that you will wonder what have fortune. Come, Brogius. <laughs> Tis your penance but to hear the story of your loves discovered. <laughs> that done, <laughs> our day of marriage shall be yours. One feast, one house, one mutual happiness. <laughs> 